It's a um, niche um, news and analysis website. Um, it started about two years ago. It uh, was born out of Maverick magazine that uh, some of you may remember. Um, and has quite a unique take on online advertising in South Africa. So does online advertising work for publishers? And this is where what, what, what would fall into what we call display advertising uh, on, the, on the internet. And when we had these focus groups with people uh, on both sides of the fence, um, we got the overwhelming feeling the answer was no, um, for both advertisers and as well as for publishers. So from, from an advertiser's perspective, if you go look at some of the uh, biggest websites in South Africa and, and around the world, the trend is pretty much the same. Uh, if you're an advertiser and you pay to be on one of, their, on one of their banner spaces, you could end up being one of 14 different adverts on a single page. So you can imagine your message uh, is kind of lost in between 13 other advertisers. Everyone's trying to be flashing rich media, everyone's trying to get your attention, and all that happens is uh, the reader ends up blocking you out. Um, so that was one of the biggest problems that, um, that, that advertisers were facing from the advertising experience on, online. And through that, your message, your advertising message, could become lost and diluted. And also something that we found through uh, speaking to, to advertisers was that premium brands didn't feel comfortable going online. Um, they didn't feel that there was a space that was adequate uh, for them to, to, to match with their brand. They didn't want to be one of 14 different advertisers, they didn't want to be irritating, and they didn't want to be um, something that would just be flashing and, and lost, in, lost in the mix. And also, all that resulted in low click-through rates. Um, you can imagine that you're one of 14, you're scrolling down, your ad is only shown for a couple of seconds at best, uh, and then gets lost with, with the message. And all that uh, ended up in low performance rates for, for online advertisers. So from a publisher's perspective, um, online advertising doesn't really work. Um, I can tell you this because we're in the cave and we know how difficult it is. And the reason why clicks and impressions don't work for us is that it just simply doesn't generate enough revenue. Um, and the reason is because traditionally online media and online publishers got their content from their print publishers. So 15 years ago when the first online publishing sites came out, it was really a case of the editors and the print departments going to Joe Soap in IT saying, hey, we've got to do this internet thing. Uh, we need to get something up there. Uh, here's the content that we've already paid our journalists for. Um, just go and do something with it. Whatever you get, you know, is a bonus. Um, and that's how the, the, the whole sort of publishing industry started out and started off on a, on a very wrong course that ended up not being a sustainable business model. Um, and then what happened was uh, online publishers decided to say, well, the ones that didn't have print, uh, print arms to, to call on, went to the syndicated newswires and said, well, it really is a hell of a lot cheaper if I just subscribe to SARPA and AP and Bloomberg and Reuters. And for the cost of subscribing to all of those is pretty much the cost of one good journalist. So you can imagine it was really just a case of uh, just getting the syndicated newswire content, throwing up as much of it onto a website and then calling them publishing. Now, the downside of that is that or uh, well, the upside of that was that we could now bring news free to people, except that the quality of journalism that then came out obviously significantly decreased. So that's why, as, as a producer of, 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 of original content, the business model just isn't sustainable. So if we look at some of the stats that, that Jennifer put up earlier, we saw that 10% of current media spend goes on to digital. But now if you strip away things like SMS, and search advertising, uh, SEO stuff, um, you're really left with 3% of total media spend budgets that is allocated to something where we consume probably 90% of our news and our written content in an online format. So 90% of the stuff that we, that we consume digitally 
only yields three percent, only gets three percent of the media activate budget. So to put it into perspective, if Vodacom have a campaign of a million rand, you know we as as publishers need to fight for our share of thirty thousand rand, and then we've got to fight against the biggest the bigger uh, websites that have you know millions of, of, of users and, and readers. So it's really a, a, a tough game. So. The industry really is at a crossroads. We've seen, even with the biggest publishers, the guys that are getting two, three million users a month, um, they're implementing retrenchments now. They're going through cutbacks because even for them who, who are big syndicated newswire content providers, even they are starting to feel the, feel the pinch. In our opinion, when we looked at what we needed to do, um, we said, look, we don't want to be in a space where we're just adding to the syndicated news that's out there. Uh, we don't want to be selling clicks and impressions. And we didn't think the model was sustainable. So we had to come up with something that was quite different. And what the Daily Maverick did was, it had the objective of saying, well, look, we, we, we want to provide a premium news service. We want to provide stuff that's high-end quality that is going to be read by decision makers and influencers in this country. So we wanted to create a space that would then also become a space that premium advertisers and, and brand advertisers would be willing to then go online and, and, and spend money on it. So the, the unique approach that we took was to say, okay, fine, we're not going to make our advertisers 1 or 14. So what we did was we took the third of the size of the screen and we dedicated that to advertisers. We said, that's yours. We're not going to, we're going to have an exclusive, uh, exclusive policy. So if you purchase the homepage for a day, that space is exclusively yours. So, that space is also um, unique in that even as you scroll down and read the rest of the page, that ad stays there for the entire duration of the visit. So what happened was by creating this really engaging news and, and articles that were thousand words, uh, magazine style articles, uh, we were getting about four to five minutes the average page duration on, on each one of our articles. So what happened was you as an exclusive advertiser were getting a full five minutes of exposure to your brand in this really large space uh, and you were the only one there. So you had 100% share of voice. And that, that was what we wanted to do was to say, okay, fine, um, high-end cars and premium uh, fashion labels and premium whiskeys would now find a place that they'd feel comfortable to go and advertise on. So we've talked about um, having that exclusive space and, um, and having that, that, that four minutes of, of exposure. And what that happened was, that the click-through rates that we are now achieving on our website by advertisers were four to five times higher than the industry average. Now, that was a function of the unique advertising model, but also the fact that our content was unique. It was we have a team of journalists that write our own news and analysis, um, and you couldn't find anywhere else. And is some of the best uh, some of the best reportage that you'll get in, in South Africa. So combining that good original engaging content with this unique advertising space meant that our advertisers were getting really good returns. Um, and it also meant that our, our readers uh, were, were happy in the experience that they were sharing, that, that they were getting on the Daily Maverick. They were getting this really good content and they were also getting, uh, recognizing that, you know, that we still need to earn a living. So advertisers were getting a third of the space and we never once got a complaint saying, you know, the ad space that you've given to the advertisers is, is, too, is too much. They were, they were happy that it was there, but as long as it wasn't irritating. But it's been tough. Um, South Africa is in a place that's going to embrace innovation. Um, the industry, you know, uh, even though it likes to call itself quite creative, isn't always that creative. Um, so it's been quite tough to be able to go out and have this conversation and tell people, look, this is why it's different, this is why it works. And we saw earlier some of the tools that, that the industry has in terms of looking at uh, you know, the most popular sites in South Africa. But what that doesn't show is it doesn't show that you, know, you, you get 100% share of voice. It doesn't show that you get five minutes exposure on that space. It doesn't show that you're the only one there exclusively, exclusively shown for, for that period of time. So it really is tough for, for us to be able to then go and explain this to, to every single media planner, every single sales agency, and all the clients that are out there as well. But what we're now finding is that, you know, as the website grows in popularity, clients are now asking their media planners and, um, and the agencies to say, look, we want to be on the Daily Maverick. And then, 
when the um, when the advent of the iPad came out, we we sat back and, and we looked and said, what is our approach going to be to this device? You know, is this device going to change publishing? And our feeling was an overwhelming yes. Uh, we believe that the iPad is going to be a, a significant turning point in, in, in publishing history. And when we looked at that, we, we looked at what some of our competitors were doing in terms of you know, what apps are going out there, how is news being presented on, on the iPad. And we came up with a strategy that was, that was also, again, quite different to what uh, uh, some of our other uh, news publishers are doing. And we came up with something that um, is called iMaverick. We launched it a month ago. Um, and it's a daily newspaper. So, but it's an, it's an iPad-only publication. iMaverick is the third uh, iPad-only publication in the world, the daily iPad-only publication in the world. What we did differently with, with this, and why we didn't create an app where we just regurgitated the website because we wanted to create a single edition newspaper for the iPad. By creating a, a single edition newspaper, that gives you the opportunity to kind of take the best of digital and the best of print and combine it onto something like you know, onto tablet publishing. And that gives you the opportunity to have full page ads um, that are that creates a much more beautiful experience and a much more pleasant experience than the web ever could. Um, as well as you know take the benefits of, of the best of print, but combine it with, with what digital has to offer in terms of cost savings, in terms of multimedia, in terms of all those other benefits that, that print could never have. So there'll be things like uh, being able to click a Toyota ad, engage the GPS of the device, uh, submit your cell phone number, find the nearest uh, store, Toyota store, and then book a, desk, book a test drive. You know, all that, that, that you can do because you have these other senses and other elements that, that the tablet now brings to now brings to advertising. So for us, when we looked at um, you know what we were going to do in, in the tablet space, we wanted to be able to have all the all the opportunities that the device has to offer. So, how do we make online advertising more effective for for the reader as well as, as, well as the uh, advertiser? You know, our priority is to make content king. You know, if you've got crap content, if you've got crap news, if it's the same story that you've seen on five different websites, um, you know, you're going to struggle to engage your, your reader. If your reader's not engaged, there's, there's almost no chance that they'll be engaged with the advertising. So the thing about impressions is that you, know, you can have millions and millions of, of, of users, but you know, if they're not the right guys, if they're not the right market, you know, and, and you're not able to um, differentiate or define those guys accordingly, um, you know, that's why you're going to have impressions that are just going to be sitting there and, and doing nothing for, for the advertiser. Um, respect your readers, and, and that's something that, that we, we try and do at all times, uh, and that we reflected in, in, in our advertising models, is, is to put something together that doesn't irritate, irritate our readers, but lets them know that gives the advertisers the, the right amount of exposure that can make it effective. Uh, and then lastly, there, there's, a, there's always a social media element uh, that we feel can that we feel com can complement your online advertising. I think it's not something that should be uh, completely independent of the two. They work very well hand in hand. Um, we, we do very limited stuff on the <coughs> social media side of it, but because that, that's where, as publishers, we try and keep that respect with, with, with our readers. But it is a complementary vehicle that we think can fit quite nicely with online advertising. That's it. Um, short and sweet. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.